What's up, podcast listeners and YouTube watchers? I'm Chase Lee, the co-host of the Real Me and Cole in the Movie podcast and a contributing reviewer on DallasMovieScreenings.com. And I got another movie to review for you guys, and that would be The Wind. Now, this one comes from IFC Midnight, also known as the Independent Film Channel Midnight. And uh, this one is directed by Emma Tammy. And this one stars Caitlin Gerard. Gerard, uh, I apologize if I mispronounce that. And she uh, is the star of this film, and she plays a, a housewife of the late 1800s where, you know, she stays home, she does the chores and everything. You know how the 1800s were. Her husband uh, goes out, he he builds things, grows crops, goes to town to pick up supplies. So she's at home quite a bit. So there's a lot of, you know, downtime, a lot of loneliness that she kind of has to like endure because there's nothing out there. It's their ranch and virtually nothing else. And so that starts to get to her a little bit. So she starts seeing some weird activity going on outside of her in her husband's cabin. You know, we have uh, goats uh, being slaughtered, um, and we have uh, some weird voices that she's hearing in the middle of the night. And so you, you're you starting to think like, oh, wow, she's starting to lose her mind a little bit. Is, be, is it because she is um, being weighed down with this isolation and she's starting to go a little stir crazy? Or is it because it's something new, supernatural uh, we don't really know. You got to watch the movies. So, you know, going into this, I had no idea what it was. Never saw a trailer for it. Never even heard about it. But I, uh, you know, got the email to be like, hey, you want to watch this movie uh, for a review? Sure. Uh, IFC uh, usually um, has some really great midnight uh, lineups in their, you know, midnight catalog. So I said, sure, why not? I got to tell you, I, I like this movie quite a bit. And there's a lot of things happening that deal with both genres, uh, whether it be Western or horror, because it's a great combination of the two. I would say, because a lot of people might look at it as a Western movie disguised as a horror film or vice versa. I actually think it's the opposite. I think it's a horror film disguised as a Western, and it wears that blanket just ever so uh like snugly and it just it, it, it makes sense for this type of combination of genres to come together like this and make a pretty great entertaining movie so you know to start off at the top you know with uh emma tammy uh directing this thing she has a hard job in terms of this is not just one movie and one tonal path that you're going to go down with this is two and so during the horrific scenes we have, you know, like kind of this uh, glitchy editing. We might have scratching on the strings from the orchestral um, music selection. We have, you know, creepy acting. We have this really kind of like unsettling type of atmosphere. She creates that with just the horror stuff. And then we have the Western side of it, which is, you know, showcasing this beautiful landscape, really kind of um, soaking in its outer beauty while also like ratcheting up the tension and just having like this really nice family drama um, set in the late 1800s and capturing that Western attitude, that spark that you need um, to call it a Western and a horror film. Like you need to have um, the spark of both. And uh, I think she excels in that completely. It, it is just dynamite type of, uh, um, directing where, you know, you can take both of these melding together. It doesn't seem forced. It doesn't seem unnatural. It is a fluid transition going back and forth between the two. And it actually makes sense if you think about it. Because in the late 1800s, women were oppressed. <laughs> they were. And so they didn't really have, you know, much to say in this time frame. You know, and their mindset was like, oh, I do things around the house. I do things with whatever my husband says, like, they do whatever people tell them to do. And so they are oppressed citizens in that time frame. And also, our main character is repressed because we have this, like, um, force. This, like, dark, uh, malevolent, malevolent force coming after her. So she's controlled by that as well. And I thought, once again, a great mirroring of the, um, the genres. And so... That was also really smart. Um, so on top of actually creating like real atmosphere from both sides, 
as well as making the story um, have its potency in both. It's just a really well directed and well written movie. We have uh, characters that are you know very simply written. There's nothing uh, too much about them. We don't need to know much of the backstory behind these characters. It's just like it's just a straightforward like, hey, we live in this time frame. Something's happening outside. You know, we need to figure this out type of deal. And it's just a it's a really type of urgent movie. You get straight to the point. There's no fat on it. It's a very lean script and uh, very just uh, sharp directing. It's just a really nice uh, directing, writing um, duo that was uh, done with this uh, movie for sure. And the acting is also great. I, I love the the main actress, uh, Gerard. Gerard. Um, it said that she was in Insidious, The Last Key. Well, you can strike that off your resume because this is way better than that one. Listen, I like the Insidious franchise and I have a soft spot for number four, but this is way better. Um, so I, I had no idea where she was from until I, I looked at the IMDb. I was like, oh, she was in Insidious uh, Part 4. So, yeah, she is fantastic. She, she like, harnesses the, you know, kind of, like, housewife, you know, uh, loving, devoted, um, you know, spouse back in the late 1800s. But then she has, like, this slow turn of madness. And we get to see this psychological switch in her head and like she is going crazy um from being stuck in this uh house for you know long periods of time and hearing this um really dark demonic demonic force um outside of her cabin like she is slowly losing it and it's just it's all within the makeup to have the the bags under her uh, eyes highlighted and emphasized and just her performance and the way she like just kind of like looks off into the the distance or the way she moves or just the way like um, she interacts with her husband. It's just, it's really great acting. It's, you know, the type of stuff that like it will make or break this movie. None of it was corny or cheesy. It was, it was grounded uh, on a level, uh, on a playing level field where I was like, wow. Like if this actually, if I, if I lived in the, the late 1800s, I could see someone acting like this. From uh, cabin fever syndrome, basically. But also, that's what they did. You know, uh, back in the day, they didn't really have much going on. They stayed around the house. And that could be very um, isolating and isolating of the mind and really having it play my, uh, mind tricks on you. And so, once again, just really smart writing. Just little trinkets here and there that just make it uh, worthwhile. And, you know, for an hour and 27 minutes, it's a tightly edited movie. It is like from the get go, it shows off um, something really graphic, and it's just like, okay, we're in this. Um, I, I want to know what's happening. I want to know what's going on. Nothing really much is explained of this kind of like dark force that's like kind of going after him. It's just more of like it's just a generalization of like a demon coming after them. Nothing's really explained. But I got everything. I got all the subtext and the hints and everything that kind of how this demon kind of correlates to living in that time frame where, you know, people were scared of anything. If you got a paper cut, you might have died. If you uh, would have gotten dysentery, you would have probably died. It's just, it's that type of uh, living in that mind space where you were scared for your life every single day because you didn't know what was going to happen to you. Medicine was not as advanced and you could die at any moment. And so that was also a really smart play to have this thing kind of chase after these people um, and really kind of highlight that aspect of that time frame. So, yeah. And then, of course, uh, like I mentioned earlier, but the music is great. It, it has that like the insidious flavor where it's just a lot of scratching on the strings and just really kind of like just unsettling and unnerving type of music. Just once again, piles onto that atmosphere and just a great um, kind of icing on top of the cake type of deal. So. Yeah, this is a this is a great little watch. Um, I will recommend it for any horror fans or even Western fans. And let's bring these two uh, communities together. You know, I, I always knew that uh, Western fans and horror fans just hate each other. But I think this will uh, kind of put it into that civil war. So, you know. Um, yeah, I'm going to give The Wind. Um, I was kind of battling with it. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was either going to be a B or a B plus. But I think just for right now, I got to stew on it a little you know, a little longer, maybe like a couple years from now, I'll be like, man, that was better than I thought it was. But I think as what it was trying to deliver, delivers it just, uh, just 
good. You know, it's just a really good movie. So uh, I'm going to give the win to B. It's a, it's a, it's a good little movie and, uh, I think you should check it out. So, uh, I will recommend, uh, this one for sure. So what'd you guys think of the wind or have you even heard of it? Comment that place is right below my face and let me know. And that'll do it for this review guys. I'm Chase Lee and tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.